All right, I'm going to do a few uh, videos on setting colors. Uh, they can be complicated and messy, and sometimes you want something other than light gray against slightly darker gray. And that's the default, as you can see. There's a window with some radio buttons and a couple of um, regular buttons, toggle buttons, regular button. And when you click them, something happens in the background, as you see there. Radio buttons give you two, uh, two, uh, two flashes because uh, one button's going off and the other button's going on. So it's actually two calls. Check button's only one. Okay. Uh, as you often, you've probably noticed that just about everything in GTK is gray against gray, including, for example, our background here, the... Um, and get this off the screen, actually, um, in the Glade. Uh, sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you want some real colors on the thing. The other thing you also notice about GTK is the buttons always tend to be somewhat chunky and far apart. Uh, that's because different themes that you run will change the size of the buttons. Sometimes they'll change the colors, too. Uh, sometimes you don't want that. Um, but I'm running Mint X, which is not the default for uh, Linux Mint 19.2 with Mate. It's the version I'm running. Um, Mint Y is. If I go over here and I hit Change Background, and I go to Theme, and I click on Mint Y, you'll see things changed. We went to an even harder to read, in my opinion, uh, version of this, where the buttons are... You know, um, they have color in them now, though. You can see that. But... Um, that's really difficult. Uh, that's not high contrast. Now, other themes here, of course, do. I mean, you can pick uh, themes, and you see there's uh, some whatever color that is. That's pink. I don't know. Um, you go to some dark themes down here, and it gets um, rather mysterious looking, uh, and so forth. I, I don't know. Um, a lot of times, you really don't want them playing with the colors, uh, and many of the colors that are default selected are... Difficult. Another thing I don't like is these um, hard-to-find um, buttons at the top. So you go into Customize. I go into, I like the, the old-fashioned, you know, Windows 95 uh, buttons. That's the Millennial Edition I get. And I like the icons from GNOME. And, um, see, I'm back to something like this. Whatever you want is what you want. Okay. Um, well, let's change the background color. I like blue. Okay, so we're going to go in. Here's the code. And this program is very simple. It's just got the button code and some, um, s some uh, callback routines uh, that are extremely simple. Um, but the color code is up here. It's commented out. And the co um, I'm removing the comments, as you can see. Um, first of all, you declare a variable of type GDK color. It's got the three color components in it. And then you will use, most likely, GDK color parse. It's a function that's in part of the GDK package, um, which will parse a color. Um, first of all, you pass it the address of the col color variable, and you pass it the color. Now, the colors you pass can be the internet colors, like dark blue, red, green, peach puff. I haven't tried peach puff, but it is one of the internet colors. Uh, or you can pass it a hexadecimal string. Uh, that would be pound sign followed by some hex characters, either three hex characters or six hex characters, or I guess it would be 12 hex characters, where um, they're red, green, and blue. Now, GDK color uh, returns a uh, Boolean. If it parsed, you get true. If it didn't parse, well, then I set the colors myself. I set them to a low level of red and green and a higher level of blue, which gives me a somewhat dark blue color. Okay, uh, but if it does parse, um, the color variable will be so set. Uh, you can set the background on your window with this function. GTK widget, modify background, window, GTK state normal. There are some other states. They're not terribly relevant. I've, not seen, I've never used them, but there are others. But nonetheless, that's what you want. You pass the address of the color variable. Okay, that's all. Um, I better write it out. And I go over here and compile it. And I run it. Oh, well, I got my blue, but a lot of other stuff disappeared. Where, where's my text here? I mean, it's there. I mean, I'm clicking on them, but you can barely see the, um, the text associated with those buttons. Well, that's horrible. Why don't I go into here and say, well, here's a radio button. How do I change the color of the word radio button? The answer is I can't. There's nothing in Glade to do that with. Um, not, not at this level. There are ways of calling functions and doing funny business, but um, they don't work too well. 
Okay, so what do I want to do? I want to, first of all, for the radio button, add custom content. And then I want to go to the display, and I want to add. You see, well, um, let me, uh, you see, when I want to add custom content, a gray hash area here, that's where the custom content will go. I could drag an icon in here or something. But I want to dr uh, drag a label into that place. This gets a little tight there. And I want to do the same here is I want to uh, add custom content, and I'm going to, um, I'm not going to put anything serious, but um, I'll drag a label in there, and finally down here for the check button. This can be done for a lot of different things which have text. Remove the text and go to custom content. And so now I've got custom content. Now the custom content has I've noticed there's two things here. There's the label. It's got the text label. I, you know, put numbers next to it, stuff like that. Whoops. No, yeah, carriage return. But um, this is the radio button. The radio button contains the label. If you can see over here, it's radio button. There's the label. I didn't give the label a name because I don't intend to access it directly. If I were going to dynamically change it, which I can, I would have to give it an ID and, you know, yeah, get access to it in the program. But anyway, there's the label. It, labels have attributes, and one of the attributes is the color, foreground color. So I go down here and click it, and I go from my yellow, and I say OK. If you screw it up, you can just delete it and start over again. Um, sometimes you get the wrong... For example, it's got a transparent background. If you made the background something non-transparent, well, let's do that. Um, there is a color there, and let's uh, let's go for for a transparent background. And what would I like for a transparent background against yellow? How about orange? Um, okay, you now you see that looks different. And finally, uh, I have to say okay. And finally, down here, do this one, and go for the attribute. You can change the a uh, lot of attributes here, um, font size and stuff like that. And I'll go again for my um, for my yellow. I like yellow. Okay, save them. Bring that off the screen. Um, oops. Uh, compile it. And there you see. Now these could be made bigger because you can change the font sizes. If you make them bigger, you're going to have to space things out. So um, so that's, whoops, I did not mean to go full screen. But uh, there indeed is it, um, is how to, how to have labels on buttons, which would otherwise be black text against perhaps a dark background. So that gives you control of the text. The font, the um, the type of font, bold, italic, whatever, um, the size of the font, name of font, all that stuff can be changed in those edit attributes. But technically, that's not really part of the button. It's owned by the button. But if you click on it, it works the same way. All right. Uh, now we get two other problems. First of all, we have this slider here, which I would like to change colors with. And there are the actual buttons. Now, with the actual buttons... Um, if you start Googling for this, you're going to find stuff on how to change the color of buttons, but it won't work with Glade. There's a reason for that, and that's what the next video will discuss.